everyone. Welcome. Oh, it's been two weeks. I'm so sorry. Uh, oh my goodness. This is floss tube number 60. My name is Candace. I am so sorry. I just, this, this might be a little rough. And I apologize. Um, <laughs> I'm surrounded by stuff. So if you were here last week, I talked about, um, well, let me back up. This is a channel about cross stitch. Uh, honorable mentions will go to some remodeling we're doing slash facelift type stuff. Uh, and a gigantic bee that I'm pretty sure was like a murder hornet. Um, yeah, let's start with that, shall we? I just got home from work. Hence the work clothes. And one of the guys that works for my husband was bringing over some plywood because he's, my husband's going to make like a little, um, platform for our washer and dryer so that they're on an even level. We don't have to have blocks underneath, you know, um, cause sometimes the washer gets a little crazy and it kind of jiggles its way off of those blocks. So he's going to make this nice little platform that's only going to be about this high so I can still reach all the way inside the washer. So... I'm waiting on Randy. He pulls up, he gets the plywood out, brings it up by the garage. We're talking about the cabinets that I've been painting that are in the garage. And we walk back out and I was talking about the sunflowers that are, I have to get a picture. I'll get a picture and we'll talk about it next week. But all of a sudden we see this gigantic, I'm talking a good three to four inches of hornet slash wasp slash ground wasp. I don't even know what it was, but it was huge. And neither of us wanted anything to do with it. So we quickly said our goodbyes and I came in to do my video. So I'm a little frazzled because that thing was huge. Like it would probably kill me if it stung me. Oh, oh. Anyway. Yeah. So I'm not done yet, but I, I will have before and after pictures. Um, the cabinets, because we have higher humidity here in Northwest Indiana, um, things aren't drying as quickly as they would if we were doing it inside. Um, which reminds me, you can probably hear my dehumidifier running. It's a very soothing sound. So hopefully it doesn't put anyone to sleep. But, um, so yeah, I've moved a lot of stuff out of the way so that when the cabinets come in, probably tomorrow, we'll be able to just put them right in and then I can, you know, get the doors put on. And then I am going to um, hopefully not have to do any touch-ups, but we'll see. I know my husband doesn't watch my channel, which is fine. Um, but I'm, I want these cabinets to look super awesome. And I'm very particular about their painting method. And my husband is a little, I love him. Slop it on, rub it in. So, um, shh, don't tell him I said that. So anyway, you might hear the dogs upstairs. I just let them in because I didn't want like murder hornet to go and carry one of them off. So let's see, my kids are still gone. They will be back August 11th. Um, today is August 4th, so I still have one more week, Sans kids. I will tell you, um, I love my kids. I am really enjoying this time with my husband. Just the two of us doing home improvement stuff, going out to dinner, um, just being able to spend time with him without anyone else. It's nice, because the only time that ever happens is if we go on vacation and then you're on vacation. So it's a little different anyway, but this has been super awesome because we're doing stuff to the house. We're, you know, going to Menards or Lowe's or whoever has what we need. And we're picking out things together. We're agreeing on things. We're, you know, I don't know. It's, it's been so nice. It's been so nice being able to talk to my husband like an adult. So, um, yeah. So after this, I will, quickly edit and which shouldn't take long because I've been kind of monogamous the last two weeks. Um, 
and then I have more painting to do in the garage and hopefully I don't get killed by murder hornet. So I want to mention a couple things first because it's early in the video and I, I think I told you guys, I won, um, the, one of the giveaways from the sunshine stitchers. You guys, if you don't watch the sunshine stitchers, you need to go do it right now. But Shelia watched my whip parade and commented on my video. And then she shouted me out on their video on Sunday. Oh my gosh, I saw it on Monday and my heart almost stopped. <laughs> I was so excited. I was like, oh, oh my gosh. This is my little, my notes I made for myself today as I was stitching and thinking about what I needed to talk about. So, oh, thank you, Shelia. Um, the drawing for the Ada. Oh God, there's probably gonna be a, okay, maybe not. I thought there was gonna be an avalanche. The 14 count Ada that I was doing a giveaway for on um, the last video. So people have had two weeks to enter for this because I didn't record last week. So the winner is Sharon Mann from Han, or I think it's Mann, M-A-H-O-N. Sharon, congratulations. You won the 14 count Ada. So my email's listed below. Shoot me an email with your address so I can get this sent out. Um, I've been keeping it up there so that it doesn't Okay, maybe it's going to stay. So that my, my cat's like plastic. And they would put little kitty teeth marks in it um, if I didn't keep it like up there. So, okay. So congratulations to Sharon. Three floss tubers that I've been watching in the last two weeks and am completely in love with. First up, Stitchy Sarah Reads. Stitchy Sarah Reads. Like, reads a book. Um, I'm going to link all of these people below. But... She was at StitchCon with me. I'm fairly certain we met, but it was very quickly and kind of like an in-passing. Well, she started a floss tube, and she has three videos out now. Um, but she has, kind of like me, she does a lot of different stuff. So it's not um, like all this designer or all this designer, all this one style of stitching. Um, so she is super fun to watch. Elizabeth. Frizzy Lizzie Stitches. You guys, I don't know why people aren't watching her. I mean, I'm sure people are, but they need to subscribe to her. She is definitely under a thousand and she is the cutest. She, I love her. Even after she cut her hair off, I was like, oh! and then, um, no, she's adorable. So go watch Frizzy Lizzie Stitches. Her name's Elizabeth. I love watching her. She's great. Um, and then you guys have probably already heard of him, but I cannot go without mentioning Chris Cross Stitch. So it's Chris X, like R-O-S-S -S, Stitch. Uh, you guys, not only is he amazing to listen to, his stitching is gorgeous. And I just, there's no one else out there like him. There's nobody else out there like him. I love watching him. He is fantastic. So go check out Chris. I'm sorry. I have the floss tube like my nose itches. Your nose always itches on floss tube. Um, oh, geez. Maybe my hair was tickling it. Anyway, go check out Chris. <sighs> you guys, and yesterday was his birthday. I'm not going to say how old he is because he does that in his video, but um, he got a new friend. You have to go check out his latest video. You'll get to meet his friend. Um, makes a, an, a, a quirky little appearance at the beginning of his video. So go check out those three. I will link them below in the drop down description box. If you're watching on your phone, if you're watching on a TV, you'll have to, you know, do that thing where you go on a phone or a computer and look up the links. But so we have Chris Cross Stitch, Elizabeth, who is Frizzy Lizzie Stitches and Stitchy Sarah Reads. And of course the Sunshine Stitchers. Who doesn't know about them? Okay. Let's get into the stitching. Let me bust out my notebook. I have no room over here. Come on, guys, spread out. All right, hold, hold on. Oh, you know what? Let's start with this first so I can get it out of the way. Uh, I had a question on, it was either my last video or the video before about how I store 
my threads. So if I'm doing a full coverage piece, each full coverage piece has its own bobbin box. And ignore this, it's the color I was working on um, and I just set it on top and then close it. It still closes all the way. I mean, it's a little snug, but. So what I do is I bobbinate the colors used for that chart and then I put them in their own box. And I actually write, I don't know if you can see that right there. It's just a permanent um, like Sharpie pen. And honestly, it, it does rub off because this is like the shiny plastic. These are just art bin ones. Uh, ooh, but they have ones that fit the, pull, or the paper cardboard DMC bobbins. You can stand them up in the ones you can get from Michaels. They're the Loops brand, I think. Loops and Threads. Um, I have one of those. I should have brought it. But holds the same amount of floss, but you can stand them upright so you can see the numbers easier. Um, I do write... Let me grab a bobbin that's not quite so haphazard. Um, I write the number on it. Yeah. I don't use the stickers because they don't stay on, so I use one of those Sharpie pens and I write on it. So these are all the colors for um, Mini Dark Goddess, which I worked on this week. So the cool thing is, as I finish a color, I will take that bobbin out and I will put it back in my master stash. I have one of the bobbin cases that's a double, so there's like a case on the bottom and then a case on the top, and then that way you can um, open one side or the other. But that's where my master stash lives. So, if I'm using fancy floss, fancy floss, I really don't like that term. If I'm using overdyed threads that someone worked super hard to make beautiful, that sounds better. I will, I totally just whipped this in here today. I will put them on a floss ring. And I made this, I just got some cabochons and the bezels and some binder rings. And then I used paper, um, like scrapbook paper, and I just did like a, um, like a fussy cut, basically. If you know anything about quilting, I fussy cut it. I don't know. Oh, it was a shadow. I was like, why is it dark right there? It's a shadow. There we go. But yeah, so I used a little bit of um, E6000, and then I squished the top on wiped off the excess real quick and just let it dry overnight. So this is what I do. I just hang the, I have some black on here because I needed it, some 310. Um, cause I'm not going to use over dyed black. Not when I can just use 310, but so these are how I store the flosses if I'm using over dyed floss. And then if I'm using just regular DMC, woo! I almost knocked that off. There's glass underneath that bag. I should not do that. Um, I got a bunch. Oh, there's a needle binder in there. I got a bunch of these little bags on Amazon. Um, they are, I can't remember what size, but really I just looked for a zipper pouch and they're kind of like a mesh zipper pouch and I store my bobbins in there and then that way they're not flying all over in my bag. And I don't put my scissors in there, though. This actually has a cap. I don't know why it's not on it. Probably because there's a needle minder in here. But, um, but yeah, generally my scissors have their cap on them or they are in some sort of um, case so that they don't stab my fabric. Okay, so I'm going to gingerly set that back over there. Okay, so I hope that answered your question. If you have more questions about floss storage, let me know. But that's what I do. Full coverage goes in cases. Um, I use floss drops for over dyed threads and then um, just a little zipper pouch. And granted, I could make some zipper pouches, but I haven't had time to make anything lately. You will see no quilting in this video. You will see quilting haul, but there's no actual quilting in this video. Okay, so there's that. Now, how about what I stitched this week? I am going to start with the... Now there were no finishes, but there was a whip go goal met today. Today. 
Yay! So, now Whipco, Jesse Marie does stuff. Um, it's already August. So, it's already August. Um, so, yeah, I mean, you could try and start now, but might as well just wait for January. So here we go. This is Lizzie Kate Christmas Rules. There, it's a nice long one. There's all the rules. My whip go goal for this was to finish the topper, which is available for free on her website, and then four of the rules. So these first four rules. And these are great. There's two charts on each one. And guess what? I did it. Now, if you guys follow me on Instagram, you'll have seen that originally I had the background of where it says rules at the top. Um, I had those all filled in. I hated the colors. They were the Weeks Dye Works. They just looked uh, like old and grungy. And that is not the look I was going for for Christmas. So I changed them. And looky there. Haha, -ha, I'm so excited. So I changed the colors. I ripped all those stitches out. And I changed them to brighter. I'm using, let's see, because I converted all the colors. So really, this was super easy to convert colors on because you need a light red and a dark red. You need a brown a yellow, a blue, a pink, a white, and then you need three greens. I would say very dark. So there's the three greens. So you have very dark and then regular, I would say like regular green and light green. This is used for things like, um, the pine tree at the top or, uh, some of the words so far, but not a ton. You're using these two much more, which I did order more of because I know I'm going to run out. So they are uh, Classic Colorworks Grasshopper and Four Leaf Clover. So that's what I did behind where it says rules. And then there's the first rule. Be kind and of good cheer. And then we have Treasure Family. Fa la la as you decorate and honor traditions. Now, there are some buttons that go with these. I will not put those on until the end. There's no backstitching. Uh, this is Lizzie Kate. She generally doesn't backstitch. So uh, I am ridiculously excited that I got this far on this project. And this was one I had started for um, like Christmas in July. And, oh, hold on. Hi, husband. I'm doing my video. <laughs> so anyway, I had originally grabbed this because it was a whip go and for Christmas in July. And I really, really, really wanted to hit my goal on this. And I did. And I'm so excited. So that is Lizzie Kate Christmas rules. And it sounds like he just let the dogs out again. He had to give them a bath last night. Bella, oh my gosh. So Bella is all black. She has white on her chest and she has a white stripe on her nose. And that's it. She came up from laying in the dirt and her brown eyes were darker than her fur. She was like a dirty, dusty, it was horrid. So as I'm painting cabinets in the kitchen, he had to give the dogs a bath. Okay. So that one. Then all the rest you're going to see your full coverage. So I didn't show you where that was before, but I think I was still working on the banner the last time you guys saw it. I mean, I'll have thrown a picture in likely. This is mini home for the winter. And I started this on July 1st and I love it. I am, I'm kicking its butt. Let's see. Let's go back here to my project tracker. Um, this is where it was before. And I did 5,063 stitches. So looking at it, I would say I have about half a page done. I'm just loving all the colors. 
I'm loving them. This is on a 20, this is a 25 count Lugana. Um, I picked off white because there's a lot of white in here and I wanted to be able to see where my stitches were. Then, oh my gosh, I pulled out Mini Dirt Goddess. I have not touched this since April 30th. Oh, please. Okay, sorry. I had to tell my husband about my murder hornet. Um, anyway, so Mini Dark Goddess. I totally lost my train of thought. Sorry. Oh, yeah. Here's where it was before. I have not touched this since April 30th. Yeah, April 30th. So it's been three months. So here's where it is. I just picked this one up. I guess I gotta move back a little bit. I just picked this one up August 1st. Um, it is my focus piece for um, semi sane stitchers. And I'm also using it in the Stitch Talk Hade Challenges group. There is no way on this green earth that I am going to finish the, um, the National Parks Challenge. I would pretty much have to stitch this exclusively for the rest of the year to finish it. So um, here I am. So I've only done a little over 200 stitches on it um, because it's only been three days so far. But I'm also using this and Mini Home for the Winter and the next two projects. No. Two of the next three projects are for... Um, it's like Uno, but it's called You Know. So the rules seem a little complicated if I try to explain it. So I'm not going to try and explain it. Um, but it's fun. And you use four whips for it. Okay. There's those two. So then Stitch Talk Hade Challenges, the 100 Days of Hade started again. And that started on August 1st. So this is Mini Citrine. This is my third time doing the 100 Days of Hade, and I've used Mini Citrine for all of them. So this is where I was before. And that's where I am right now. So what I've been doing is, there's quite a bit over here, but I'm to the point, so what I wanna do is 100 stitches a day for 100 days. And then that should leave me with about 5,000 stitches left to do on this. This is my closest to a finish. I'm just over 70% and my goal for the year is 75. So shoot, if I could get this done, even better. Um, but I'm using this for the 100 days and it's on the, the Uno game. Uno, you know. It's on that game too. So... The likelihood of me getting more than 10,000 stitches is pretty good. Um, so you will probably see a lot of these four full coverage pieces. So that's the third one. And then the fourth one I'm using I've not stitched on yet. Ooh. But it is... <laughs> Here it is. <laughs> I'm just trying to show it to you without, you know, showing you what it really looks like. Magic study. This was a limited edition chart from Heaven and Earth Designs. You can no longer get it. Um, I'm very discombobulated now that my husband got home while I was filming. So anyway, this is where it's at right now. It has not changed from the last time you saw it, um, but it has not been rolled yet for Uno. So, uh, oh no, it has. It was last night. It got rolled last night. So I will likely work on that tonight, depending on how much um, we have to get done upstairs. So the last thing I worked on was, and I didn't roll this back down. This is mini autumn camp magic. Um, I don't know if you remember, but I was doing a challenge, uh, a bingo challenge in semi sane stitchers. And this one was one of the ones, this and mini citrine were the two basically that I had picked colors from my bingo card to do. So um, here's where it was before. It's going to look different because I haven't rolled it back to the top yet, but here's where it is now. 
So I had to scroll it down because I had a color that I needed to do and I couldn't do it <laughs> without moving my scroll rod. So this one I got, I'm sorry, my tea was in the way. Um, wrong way, wrong way. Mini Autumn Cat, um, almost 2000 stitches last month on this one. So I have a feeling this one will definitely uh, be showing its face again very soon because I am, I want to stitch all things fall, but let's do plans real quick because that kind of like segues into it. Here's the thing. I'm going to be doing Uno, but as far as like, um, other projects, travel projects, work projects, whatever, I am going to be focusing on catching up on my Whipco projects. So most of these are on the Whipco board, the full coverage pieces. Um, the two numbers that were called, I'm sure you've seen this already, is seven and eight. So for me, seven was Long Dog Samplers, Game of Swans. So this one, um, I started for the Long Dog Leap Day Sal with Aaron Two Martini Stitcher. This is on a 30 count or 38, 32 count Silvery Moon Lugana. And this is where it's at right now. My goal is to get the top two pages done or the whole top. I think it's like two and a little, I think. So that's my goal for this one. Um, t totally achievable. I mean, this was not, I made some slightly outrageous, uh, not outrageous, but Maybe a little too, um, words fail me. I was a little too gung-ho about the challenge, apparently, and how much time I would actually have to stitch. So that's one. And then the other one that was called, number eight, is Seasons in Chalk Art. This was a um, Priscilla Blaine and Kathy Haberman from Hands On Design uh, collaboration. This is in Just Cross Stitch Magazine 2016 in the June issue. So I'm doing this on the, uh, to me it's dreaded. The dreaded stiff black Ada. Um, but here's where I am. So, I have a lot of stitching to do. And I did um, change some of the colors in this to um, some classic color works that I had on hand instead of getting the called for colors. Um, it's going to look amazing when it's done, but look how much I have left to do. Look at all those flowers, and that is all white underneath the yellow in summer. Oh, it's so much white. So, I hate to say it, but this one does not call to me. I really like it though. And I, I probably wouldn't do all of the seasons, but for some reason, and it's because Helen D has this up behind her when she records and I look at it and I go, oh, that looks so good up on her wall. I really need to finish that. Um, I kind of wish I would have been more adventurous when I started this, but I was still fairly new when I started this, um, because I would have changed the color of the fabric. Or at least used like an even weave instead of that. So um, I know it's arbitrary August and people have been talking about it and about spinning a wheel. Well, technically arbitrary means do what you want. So why would you want to spin a wheel? If you're going to do what you want. Um, I am doing what I want. I want to get my whip go goals closer to completion. So I have... My handy dandy whip go board and all the ones in pink have been called all the ones in the pinky purple are completed goals so i have some work to do um but like magic study i need to hit twenty one thousand stitches and i am let me see if i can figure it out real quick I'm at like 15, so I have about 6,000 to go. Totally doable. Um, Mini Autumn Cat Magic, the goal was 10,000. 
and I am, oh, maybe like 2,000 away, so that's no problem. Game of Swans is the top row of pages. Um, Seasons in Chalk Art Summer is a finish. Spring Awakening is from Little Dove Designs. That's a finish. I'm a little over halfway done with that one. Um, Mini Citrine, 75%. That'll be good. Woodland Wonder, if you guys remember that one from Glendon Place. That was my birthday start last year. That one I have down for a finish. I have Beating, Krynik Antlers, and Part of a Tree Left. And some Snowflakes. Uh, I have a feeling that one will be like a November, December like I will hit it hard those months. And then um, Halloween and Cross Stitch from Courtney Batacor, the two left pages. So the, you know, the left hand pages up and down. My problem is, is that it's on 28 Count Monaco and I fell out of love with, I fell out of like with Monaco. I do not like stitching on it. Um, once I started discovering Lugana and Jobelin um, I would prefer to stitch on that black Ada than stitching on Monaco. So the thing is, is I have so much done. I don't want to start it over. I don't. Um, ugh. I don't know. But anyway, so that's where, that's where I'm at for Whipgo. I had some, I'll go through this part real quick because, um, I need to get changed and, help my husband paint. I'm starving. It's only four o'clock. So let me go into Dropbox real quick. I ordered a couple of patterns that are PDFs and it's just taking a minute. So there is a stitch along coming September 1st. And it's the Nightmare Before Christmas stitch along. Oh, I fibbed. The frame is released September 1st, and the character squares will be released daily for all of October. So I'll have September to do the frame. Um, but you can find this um, from Story Stitches. I will link it below. Um, but it's got, this is the info that came out. It's got all of the, um, the colors needed, the size of fabric you need. Um, it's going to be 179 by 191. Um, and then as far as fabric, it just says to avoid dark colors since the frame is black. Oranges, light purples, greens, or teals with a gray. So, um, I'm excited. I love The Nightmare Before Christmas. It is such an awesome movie. My kids watch it. I mean, Evan is like really in love with it. Um, but yeah, so then I went to, there we go, Tiny Modernist, because I saw this chart on one, two, three stitch and I wanted it in PDF, but they only had it in, you know, regular paper chart. It was just released. So this one is called Halloween Wreath. Oh, you guys. And just look at the finishing on that. It's so perfect. Um, totally stitching this, like almost ASAP. Then I could not resist. These are adorable and they're tiny. They are, this one's called Mouse's Decorating. And this one is 59 by 59. I mean, how adorable is that? And then the other one I got was the Halloween one. It's called, um, Mouse's Stitching. And these are from Tiny Modernist. So I got these on their website in PDF. I mean, she's so cute. 123 Stitch was out of this one. They was not in stock. And that's why I went to Tiny Modernist website so that I could um, get that. Okay. So that's those. And then my Just Cross Stitch Halloween came. Guys, I have not even flipped through yet, but I'm totally stitching this one right there. Stitching this one. Stitching the, I mean, let's see, what am I not going to stitch? 
Hocus Pocus, I need coffee to focus because I don't drink coffee. Um, I mean, look at this cat. Seriously, that's me every single morning. That's what I look like. If you've ever wondered, that's what I look like in the morning. Ugh. Have a possum Halloween? I can't. They're, I, I, they're just, just from the cover alone. And there are so many in here. Ooh, I can't wait. I cannot wait. So excited. So excited. Okay. Hands on Design. This is the second part in the kitchen counter collection. And this one is, it comes with, or it came with the house. Um, this is totally me. It's not my husband. He loves to cook. This is me. Also, I had to, if pumpkins could fly, not only listening to Kathy's story on her YouTube channel, but seeing this stitched up in person, well, I mean, not in person, but on video, um, had to do it. Had to. Love it. Ridiculous. I want to finish it just like that. I have some uh, fig tree fabric. I believe that's what that is, is fig tree fabric. Mm-mm. I can do the exact same thing. Just got to find some orange rick rack. So then I got, I did, uh, Black Needle Society will have like a, um, a vault kind of, of the stuff that they've put in boxes previously. And this was one of the patterns that was in a box. And it's Be Kind Always by Stitrovia, which is Emma Congdon. Um, but I really liked this. So I got that pattern and then I got this little, it says a stitch a day keeps the crazy away. And it's just a stitching diary. It's little, just, um, like lined pages, but I thought that was neat. It's a good size to, you know, throw in your bag or whatever. Thanks to Chris Cross Stitch, I purchased this. This is Satsuma Street. Oh, I just love it. I just love it. Look at this. And he calls it, oh, it is Halloween cat. Doo -doo -doo. Ha. Yeah, Halloween cat. Cannot wait. Then I finally pulled the trigger on Hello from Liz Matthews, and I got Quaker Snowflakes. I'm still debating on whether I'm going to do that on white or colored fabric because I hate stitching with white thread, but I may have a solution for that in just a minute. Um, and Quaker pumpkins. And I'm gonna use that uh, Victoria Meta floss I got for it. I don't know if I'm gonna do this. I think I might take this out and just move the border up. So my solution for the white, see this? You see this six stranded floss right here? Apparently, Michael's carries anchor floss and it comes on a spool now 10.9 yards on a spool instead of having it in a skein guess what anchor black do you think I will ever go back to 310 after finding these so they have this set up my Michaels is not big they have like all of the colors tons of colors of anchor on spools. Now I know they're not super easy to store, but just white and black alone, these are going to make my stitching life so much easier because I like anchor black better than 310. And I have a feeling, cause this is what they call for. It's 0001 for B5200. So I don't know if they do it with, um, like regular white or blanc, but Maybe I'll just try that on this one. I'll find an awesome fabric and I'll use it for this. We'll see. You guys. She's so pretty. Her name is Sweet Pea. I love her. She was on sale on 123 Stitch. So I went ahead and I got her. The stuff that go with her. I had to order this color from Everything Cross Stitch. I think it's 108, 198. 
I can't find 34. It's confetti. It's called for in this. I have to do some searching to figure out what is substituted for 34. So I think they discontinued it, the Krynik. So um, I got the stuff for it. I will pick fabric out of my stash for it. Um, I just, mm, she's so pretty. I cannot. I, purple's my favorite color. I just can't. So then the other thing I got from Everything Cross Stitch was, this is the Dimensions Kit. <laughs> it's so cute. And this one is called Winter Gathering. I just love these birds. So it's got the blue Ada, all the floss. Um, this, I have a couple of Dimensions Kits. I've never done one. But um, this one will probably get started November or December. It should be fairly simple. All those trees are half stitch. So it's just the birds and the stockings, basically. And then a lot of backstitch. But I can't foresee this being like um, a super long-term type project. So let's see. I got my three owl threads nest egg. I'm not going to go through all the colors. Wait, is that the color I just... Oh my goodness. Oh, never mind. I didn't just buy that one. I had that one. It's mistletoe. But yeah, so there's all the colors that I got. Always yelling at the dogs. I got a couple needle minders Ooh, from It's Charm School. There's the first one. It's a cup of tea because I love me some tea. And then I love this one. It says you're terrific. fantastic. So, and then of course I got a whole bunch of stickers from her. I'm not going to open them because they will fly all over the place. Um, and I'm super sad because my armadillo from her, my armadillo broke. And I just, I wonder if the magnets are so small on these that when they accidentally like click into another one, then it makes them a little weaker. And I don't know. Okay. So that's it for the cross stitch stuff. I have a couple of quilting stuff and, um, and then that's it. This is a tin. I plan on putting my pins in here because I have some pins that are in this like teeny tiny little case. You have to get them in there perfectly or else the lid won't close. So I'm going to stick them in here instead. Fat Quarter Shop has Kona solids on sale. And I decided to get this colorway for the kaleidoscope. Now they're doing a bed runner and pillow stitch along, I think. But um, this is the kaleidoscope book from Lori Holt. So the main quilt looks like that. I don't know if there's a picture of, oh, well, I mean, there's this one. But I figured I'm going to use this. The colors are gorgeous. And I just feel like something like this, you don't want, you want very like subtle prints. You don't, or solids. You don't want like crazy prints when you make this. So I got that. Now I was worried that this would not be enough. So I went to go get another one today. This one's already sold out. So I'll probably have to just purchase um, by the SKU. Somewhere in here, there should be the SKUs. If not, I'm sure I can find them on Fat Quarter Shop's website. Got my tagged from Sweetwater. These are quilt labels, and these are my favorite by far. I love them. Now, you could iron these on. You can sew them into a quilt block. There's a lot of different ways you can attach these to your quilt. Um... I love them. I will be ordering more of these ones because they are amazing. Thanks to Crystal Rowe, who is still just under a thousand subscribers on her YouTube channel. I purchased the Liberty box. So if for some reason you guys didn't get this yet, I'm sorry, but everyone is showing like finished quilt tops already. I haven't even started. So this is... 
I mean, okay, it has like part of the picture of the quilt top. Oh, you know what? It's probably on the pattern. <laughs> so anyway, there's fabric. There's fabric for backing and binding. There's the weird quilt labels that Crystal talked about, and I agree. There's this little, um, like, decorative thing, and if I decide I don't want to put that up in my house, then I can turn it into a cross-stitch finishing piece. Um, oh, here's the pattern. There's a box of fill, and here's the pattern. So yeah, I am very excited. Very excited about this. Um, I wasn't going to get it because I didn't like the one from last year. And then I started seeing people's unboxings of it, and I was like, crap. Now I have to get it. Um, but I'm excited. Uh, that's definitely going to get made probably not anytime, like, super soon. Um, move the glass jar out of the way. Stay. So I got my second block for Designer Mystery. This is from Fat Quarter Shop using fig tree fabrics. And it came with the finishing kit. I love these boxes. They are magnetic. And they hold all of the finishing items. And they are perfect for storing your blocks. So as I get blocks done, they will go in this box. And then I have storage. And then once that quilt's completely done, I will use that for other, like, fig tree quilts. Because, yes, I'm so sorry. I'm trying to talk fast because we're already at 47 minutes, and I'm afraid my husband's going to be like, listen, you need to stop talking. Green Mountain, ugh. Green Mountain quilts, green... It'll be linked below. It was linked below two weeks ago, too. Anyway, I got um, some more scrap bags. So there's a lot of really good fabrics in them. I'm not going to take them out because I don't have, like, little bits everywhere. Um, this is the only one that I will probably put up on my D-stash because I'm not one for the, um, the like, what do you call it? super cute colors in there. Um, reproduction fabrics. That's it. So I will probably put that one up on the D stash. There is still stuff up on the D stash on Willow Spring Co. on Instagram. I am considering, because I'm not really getting any traffic over there, I'm considering just moving everything to my Etsy shop. Um, it'll make it a little easier for shipping too, because shipping is automatically um, generated on Etsy. I don't have to try and figure it out myself. So, let's see. I think that's it. Next week, I should... Oh, I should have my completed craft space done. I don't think the laundry area is going to be done yet, but the kitchen should be done too. So then I can show before and after. Um, with the um, disclaimer that my kitchen is small. But it already looks so much brighter just by painting the cabinets. Like the cabinet bases. I haven't even painted the underneath yet. All I've done is paint, like, in-betweens. So amazing. So I'm going to take care of the stuff that my cats will likely drag around and try to destroy. And then I'm going to go paint. So I hope you guys have a wonderful week. I'm sorry I talked really fast at the end of this video, but um, i got to get some painting done. So <laughs> I will see you guys next week. Bye! <laughs>